We're live in my kitchen. Hi, everybody. Ginger in my kitchen. And this is a little fun night of cooking that we're going to be doing with Dan Churchill. Uh, he's going to jump on here, and we're going to share the screen, and we're going to cook, maybe with you, maybe inspire you. This one seems relatively easy. I'm sure I will mess it up in some way. But hey, I just go in. I go in hard. So Dan Churchill, when he comes in, I'm going to go ahead and add him. Great to be with you guys tonight, and I hope that you are healthy. I hope you're well. What I love about this is this is probably the healthiest thing that I've made on GMA's page so far. So we'll see what we can do with it. And I've got, I've got some questions. Well, hello. How What's are up, you? Ginger? How nice are you? to see you. You too. This time from your house as opposed to the studio. Yeah. Slightly different. Slightly um, different indeed. And I also just came off of a workout, so I'm looking a little a little wrecked, but this light helps. So that's no, you're good. Doing, I think you're doing okay. I think the likes and everyone from coming through are proving not none the wiser. But yeah, no, plus Great. cool. What, what was your workout? What was your workout? Workout I did, today I was feeling like I did a lot this week, so I went like power walk, hike, and then I nice. did a bunch of core, you know. Heart rate's up, red, red That's eat, right. essentially. How are, you, how are you holding up during this time? Uh, I'm in, I feel like in Manhattan, there's like a bubble, you know, like I swear like we're in our own bubble within the coronavirus, because it's really, really quiet for what typically uh, Manhattan would be. But yeah, I mean, I'm just, I create a roof on my gym. Uh, I'm still working, still cooking a lot for everyone. So yeah, I mean, uh, business as usual, essentially, just more digital content and more cooking things like this, which is pretty fun. This has been the best. I've been doing virtual cook clubs. I was doing cook club on the show, but I've been doing them virtually and it's the best way to socially catch up and to have a little fun and inspire a dish. And tonight you are helping me make dinner for my family, number one. Unreal. And <laughs> which this is going straight into their mouths after this. <laughs> and then um, you put together a recipe that seems relatively simple, but I have a couple of questions because I want to try to make it. And it's something that everybody can easily do, a lot of the stuff that we all have. But um, I know that you can make some substitutions, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. So tell us, tell us what we're making. Yeah, so we're doing a, uh, well, inspired by your name, we're going to be doing a ginger, I'm doing a ginger uh, wild Alaska pollock fish roasted and then it's going to come with a really nice miso uh, vegetable situation and then all you have to do is your assorted grains to finish it off so it's, it's, it's three parts but done really simply you got your protein you got your vegetables and you got your grain in a way it's one of those perfect meals for, for mums during the week you want to get something done really simply uh, and obviously whatever you have available it's not limited by specific ingredients which is really cool yeah so you you suggested quinoa and i had quinoa but i wanted to use up these two bags of rice that were th this much in them, so Perfect. I went with rice tonight. Perfect. So that's my first substitution. I got rice, but too. I think because, I mean, my family does love fish, but not everybody loves fish, and you can't find all the fish right now necessarily. No. We did find some chicken breasts, so I'm going to substitute perfect. this, and you got to help me out because I know a lot of people will have this at home. Yeah, perfect. So we'll work away with that for sure. Um, unreal. All right, well, do you want to kick us off, Ginger, or how are we going to do this? I think you lead me through. I've got pretty much everything. I think I forgot the miso already, so i got to get that out of the fridge. Right. Um, but otherwise, I think I've, I've got the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts. Oh, you've are... already chopped up. How good. All right, I'm going to play catch up with that. So, uh, yeah, get, get your miso out. We're going to make our little marinade first. And for those playing home, if, if you can't find miso, miso is like a really strong, the best way to put it is umami, but the, I guess the more generic way of saying it is a really strong flavor. So if you're looking for something like similar, you can use Dijon mustard, obviously not Asian, more French, but it's a very strong flavor and you can whip it together with lemon juice and garlic and you're on your way. So, um, okay, so you've got your vegetables chopped up. I'm going to do the same. I've got okay. green beans today and I've got broccoli. So I'm just going to put that all into a bowl like you already have them all separated. Did you do the chopping or the family of the chopping? Who did all that? I love it. Tony just said me so hungry. Oh, God. Good one. Hey, Tony. I hope you're well, uh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, would you say so? Like we have broccoli and Brussels sprouts, but could could I add in later some mushrooms that I had laying around? 
Absolutely. So I'm actually working with green beans myself. Now, mushrooms don't take as long to cook compared to those ones. So, yeah, great point to add later on. Similar to, like, peppers or tomatoes, uh, if you've got some other random breads, like, starch will take a little longer, so you want to get them in early. But, yeah, so if you're just working with, like, as we originally are, broccoli and Brussels sprouts, they cook at the same time. But then pull them out with about 15 minutes to go, add in your mushrooms, and you're good to go. And super simple, great way to add up and use the rest of the ingredients in the fridge. Are, so, you, a, are you a person that halves or, or quarters Brussels sprouts? Oh, okay. So it depends. I, I've, we get a mixture of restaurant-sized uh, Brussels sprouts. If they're massive, we quarter them. But if they're regular size, I halve them for sure. Ideally half, because then you get, like, the perfect combination of soft inner side and then yeah. crunchy on the outside, roast and goodness. That's why I'd be a fan for it. What have you, what have you done? Uh, I did a quarter because they were pretty big and my kids like them better when they're a little smaller. The two-year-old loves Brussels sprouts, but to get Adri and the four-year-old to eat Brussels sprouts, they have to be just right. <laughs> and what, what, do they, what do they like to, how, how do they like them? Do they like them roasted or do they like them like seed in a pan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they like them roasted. They especially like it if I add bacon, of course. That's um, cool. Wicked. I don't know any two-year-olds into Brussels sprouts. Oh, yeah. He'll do. He, he prefers Brussels sprouts. He likes that over broccoli. <laughs> Big fan. All right. Well, have you got your garlic and your ginger? And your ginger? See what I did there? Have you got your garlic yeah. and your ginger there? Okay. And about how much? Okay. So it, it calls the two garlic cloves and then like a good, I guess, half an inch of garlic, but uh, of ginger, but I don't ginger. really like measuring. So um, I didn't if you're kissing someone later, everyone, maybe go easy on the garlic. Uh, but if, if you like garlic, go a bit more ham. But so it, it calls for two, two garlic cloves, but don't have to do two. And same for ginger. I, I love ginger. Um, so I'm going I'm to go with that. Too. Yeah, there you go. I've been <laughs> eating the ginger as I go. I've been like mincing it and eating it. Do you put it in juices and things like that as well? I do. And I, I love to make like the fresh ginger tea. Oh, yeah. I do that. How all do you the What's the go-to? How do you do that? I just boil the water, and sometimes I'll even add a regular tea, and then just, I like to shave it, like, the thin um, circles. Yeah, And beautiful. then that just floats in there and makes seems to make it really delicious. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Yeah, it adds an aromatic goodness. You're doing wonders to your insides. It's, it's fantastic for you in that sense. So If you all are just joining us, a lot of people are just joining us. This is Dan Churchill. He's helping us make dinner tonight. And he's inspiring you. He's making a, a, a beautiful Alaskan, um, what is it? He's now It's it. called a wild Alaska pollock, and it's actually really cool. Wild Alaska. I, I got this from the, the supermarket. It's actually frozen, uh, which means it's, oh. it's an abundant right now. It's, I saw it's actually the most uh, sustainable, it's, it's the most sustainable piece of uh, species on the planet, most abundant sustainable uh, species on the planet, which is really incredible. But it's also, you can get it frozen. So anyone can go to Whole Foods right now and pick up. That's where I got it from. So if you're looking for fish, go have that. That's a you're using chicken. And someone said on here, chicken is not the substitute for wild well, Alaskan. But <laughs> tonight I'm doing that because that's what we have. <laughs> no rules to cooking. Absolutely no rules to cooking. How good. <laughs> Ginger <laughs> stuff. So with your marinade, you, into that you've got your miso, your ginger, and your garlic. And how much miso was it again? It's about one tablespoon. Have you worked with miso paste much? Ginger? I have. I actually had this in my fridge already. We didn't even oh, have sweet. to buy it for this. So. How good. All I right. don't know that I'm an expert in it, but I've used it a bit. Yeah, hey, it's, it's, it. it's got such a good savory note that, like, you can add it with a bit of lemon juice, even some maple syrup, and rub it over anything, and it's got the best marinade. It's similar to what we're doing today. We've gone a bit more Asian with it. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, like, if you went to, have you been to Nobu before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like their their miso cod is has been like so famous. Oh yeah, the that every That's Japanese right. like restaurant now has that. Um, cool. So into our man, we have our ginger, we've got our garlic, we've got our miso. Then add our zest and also the juice of our lemon. The zest of one lemon. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, if you want to have two, go for it. But yeah, I'm uh, like we've got. Uh, isn't it funny? The hardest thing I've always found when creating recipes is actually writing down the ingredients to the measurements. That's always the hardest thing for me. Because you're not measuring it. Yeah, no, I just feel like I'm so intuitive. My husband doesn't because... like when I add citrus to things, but I love <laughs> citrus, so I always have to, like, watch the, the amount. Yeah, it's right. Fair. There you go. 
Nice little lemon squeeze in that. And have you preheated your oven already, Ginger? I did. Sweet. Unreal. Oh, we got some... I love Dan's Wild Alaska Pot Fish Chips. I love that. Can't wait to make this. Shout out, McCall. Love your work. Uh, ooh. Oh, I like that it's healthy, sustainable, and delicious, just like you said. People have Perfect. got some serious shout outs on this Wild Alaska Pot. Hey, oh. Yeah. I miss you. Hope you're having fun on the West Coast. We got some friends calling in. This is great. Okay, <laughs> so um, into into that into your. Do you have a mixing bowl with all your vegetables now? Oh yes. Great. So into that bowl, I want you to put your vegetables. So set one vegetables together with your olive oil, um, if you have any. Do you have some olive oil? There you go. And what that's going to do is help lubricate your veggies mm -hmm. and allow all the marinade that you have to actually engulf it much more easily. So you're going to add half of your miso garlic mix after the olive oil. Nice. Ooh, how was that mixing situation? Ginger, do me a favor. How confident do you feel in tossing it like this? Oh, not very confident, but I'll do it. There you go. So you push. There you go. Nice. Push forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Effort. No. <laughs> You're a natural. You're a natural. This is going to go far. <laughs> There's going to be broccoli all over the floor, but it's good. <laughs> Should I add the Brussels to this too? Yeah, definitely. Add, add half of those though. Look, okay, you know, just go all in. How many, how many kids have you got? <laughs> there you go. Give it a nice mix again. And you know what? You're at it. You might as well season with salt and pepper. <laughs> you know? like, look at how great this is. They're going everywhere. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Mums, mums around around America are gonna be going. Oh, I'm gonna give that a go and see if I can refine from spilling anything. <laughs> I'm gonna put some leg into it. There you go. Get a little splashing going too. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that one was for you, Tony. <laughs> yeah. That was All right. So once you've done that, then you get half the marinade you created. And but get I gotta that whisk that together, right? Sorry. I have to like whisk it so the miso. Yeah, yeah. Mix it, whisk it, mix it. Just make sure it's really nice and colourful. There's mine. So you can see it's all kind of mixed around. So just to break this down for everyone viewing. So you've got vegetables. You've just created any marinade that you have, essentially, where you're using a miso marinade, and you're just putting that into a bowl and mixing it. That's really simple. So chop up some veg, make a marinade, whack that in. And then because you've got a marinade that's going to serve a purpose, two things, you don't have to use to be mixing bowls. So you half of that. Yeah, go in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How good. All right, now give that a nice mix. There you go. This yeah, is nice. frightening. <laughs> Someone, this, someone's going to make it like some sort of meme out of this effort, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, once, that, once that's in, you're going to just simply lay it down on your roasting tray with all the goodies. And that's simply all, all you have to do. Like, I'm, I'm serving me and myself, so <laughs> you're servicing a family. I could probably yeah. have a go at your vegetable side, but that's going to go in my oven. I got a lot of veggies going. There you go. So at this point, once you get your veggies in, you can actually start on your quinoa. And my rice is already going, because that was going to take a long time, so... Yeah. Should we, put, should we put these in? Yeah, put them in. Go for it. Okay. Unreal. Great. Done. I'm back. I love the pants, by the way, Ginger. Are they, are they, uh, like, what are they? What do you call them? Um, uh, commando style? Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, I can't think of it either. Oh, They're um, camouflage. 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 Pants. Yeah, camouflage. <laughs> It doesn't matter either. Like, I, I am not TV ready right now, but I'm, I'm just dead. <laughs> well, it's different because you don't have to get up at 3 a.m. to be here. You can just get here, you know, exactly. You're in your home. Um, cool. Now, do you have any, uh, I know this was not in the ingredients list, but what kind of spices do you have in your cupboard? I'll show you. I just alphabetized my, my spice. Did drawer. you actually? You went, I are you? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Everyone marvel at alphabetized. In... <laughs> is this what happens in quarantine, or is this usual? 
No, yeah, I this definitely happened for the first time <laughs> the other day. And my husband said, you're losing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good. All right, Ginger, I want you to pick up turmeric for me. So pick up the turmeric. And then what else have you got there? Do you have any uh, cardamom or anything like that? Um, no cardamom. I have coriander in, in the seas. I have Actually, coriander. Yeah, definitely go coriander. Pick up some of that for me as well. And I'm, yeah. all I'm showing everyone here is, yeah, perfect. So this is one way just to next level any form of grain cooking. All you have to do is take up some spices mm -hmm. and then you're going to fill your pot with your quinoa okay. or your rice. Oh, yeah. I'm using, I'm using long grain brown rice today as well. So I know it's called for quinoa, but I'm using yeah, grains. Mine's all rice. Perfect. So I want you to just fill that up. Now, it's a two-to-one ratio of water to grain. Mm -hmm. So just getting that around. And once you've mixed that in, you can add all your spices that you have. So I'm actually going to work this thing out. I've got some cumin. I've got some cumin. I've got some chili flakes. And by doing oh, yeah. this in the water, you're just going to add a pinch. There you go. Where's your pot? Perfect. So you can add like maybe a teaspoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of your cumin seeds with the water and then put a lid on, bring it to a boil as per usual. And that is like the coolest way to add flavor, aroma to your rice, which is usually typically just a filler. It's going to make it super colorful. The kids will be like, ooh, mom, yellow rice. How good. Um, and then it's one really simple thing to do. I just learned how to do this last week, and so I already added to this rice that I started cooking. I added onion salt and garlic salt, or onion powder and garlic salt, so I can still add coriander, right? Absolutely. If you want to add garlic powder, go for it. I did already. No, I... <laughs> I'm, I'm actually learning. This is me learning from ginger cooking. This is okay. All right, so quick recap for those who are watching. We have made a marinade. We have put it into uh, a bowl full of chopped veggies, and then we put that in the oven. We put our quinoa or our rice or starch, or whatever we're cooking. That is on the heat with some spices in, ginger style. And now we're on to our protein. Now, with my fish, I don't overcook it. Wild Alaska pollock is thinner, so I'm going to keep it away while you cook your chicken. So what we're going to do with your chicken, I want you to cook it. Uh, it's, out of, it's out of the fridge, right? Oh, yeah, it's been out. All right. Oh, yeah. So, great. So, you want to bring your chicken to room temperature. Get a fry pan on medium-high heat. See, this – I never cook with chicken breast, so this scares me. I'm going to tell you. I, I love thighs. I always – I can handle thighs. I need your help with this, like, step by step. I'm really excited to teach you how to cook the juiciest chicken breast because, notably, what? it is obviously – it's a lean <laughs> Is this kind of pan, like the heavy duty? Oh, that's yeah, hard? that's gore. That's amazing. So medium high heat. Now, if, with your oven, do you have enough space in your oven for that pan as well? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. So we're going to put that in the oven afterwards, so you're not going to overcook it, and I'll show you why. Right. So olive oil on the pan in about, I'd say, 25 seconds, and okay. then what you're going to do is pick up your chicken breasts. Let me go let the dog in in that 25 seconds. Hold yeah, on. go for it. <laughs> Can we get Ginger some fish? Yeah, I reckon I agree. He needs a haircut, greasy hair. Uh, tell you what, quarantine sucks when your barb is not open. That's tough. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Great. Okay, so um, where are we at? Perfect. So what are you going to do? Olive on the pan. Now, with your chicken, you're going to pick it up with your left hand if you feel comfortable. And then with your right, I want you to sprinkle with salt. And then that side you sprinkle with salt, you lay into the pan. So salt side down. Don't laugh. At my salt bag. I keep, like, the extras from when I do this TV stuff. <laughs> Everyone always wor is very worried about I feel about like it's just like an extra bag. OCD effort with quarantine right now. It's like, I don't want to get, for obvious reasons. I'll put it in here so it looks less weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, I have uh, no problem picking up, like, poultry. My husband is so, so worried all the time. Which is fair. Perfect. Now you know, just place that chicken skin, that salt side down. And do repeat that with the other ones. Now, keep in mind, everyone, when you're watching, you have one hand. One hand works with chicken. The other hand's free and clean. So that way, when you go turn the tap on to clean your hands, you've only got one that's dirty. It makes it easy to work with. So he repeat would still that not do this. He's so, he is so worried all the time about it. <laughs> How funny. There you go. Who does, do you do most of the cooking? Um, yeah, I would say so, but he does it. He likes to cook. 
Because I so, thought you get you get back at what? What time do you get back after work? Depends. So now, because I'm in the basement, it's right away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but most of the time, you know, I, I do a split shift a lot of times. So yeah. I'm in and out. So on the split shift days, he does a lot of the cooking. Yeah, so cool. I'm okay. Gonna watch. Awesome. All right, so Jean's okay. got her chicken in the pan. Yeah, so, I'm washing. Are you washing your hands? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Was that not too early? No, that's perfect. It's fine. So the reason why we're going to do this, you're going to cook that for about three to five minutes, and you're going to okay. take a peek at about three minutes. And okay. what you're going to look at is to see the underside being golden. Now, what's happening right now is the heat is coming from directly underneath. No heat is coming from anywhere else. If you were to flip that chicken breast over, you would continue to cook from the bottom and the top wouldn't get anything, which means the center of the chicken doesn't get cooked. The problem with that is when you're cooking one side and then one side, to get to the center, you'll, you have to overcook the outsides of the fish to cook the center perfectly. So what you're gonna do is once you turn that chicken over, you're gonna put it in the oven. In the oven, the heat comes from not the bottom, but from everywhere. And so that allows you to cook the chicken perfectly inside, which is amazing. It's like what we do in um, in the restaurant world is we cook a chicken one side, and then when we're about to go, when we're about to serve it, we go into the oven, and then when it comes out, it's nice and juicy. So that's the best way to do it. It's going to make all the difference in the world because it's <laughs> impossible if you just do this. Someone's asking to see your fish. Dan hasn't started his fish yet because it takes a shorter amount of time. So he will. He'll get there. I will um, definitely. Somebody was asking where you're from. I figured that would come up. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm from a place called Sydney, Australia. So uh, yeah, so down south, uh, the deep south. So not quite Georgia, a little bit further on. Yes, just a little bit. Just a little uh, bit. I was, I was there. I was there in January to cover the the bro the, the fires. fires. So yeah. I was there, yeah. Did you not actually the best get time, time to visit? Did, I know, but did you get time to actually check it all out though? I mean, we drove the whole South Shore. All the like seven eight hours, so I saw a lot, um, but not. It was just all burnt at the time. Yeah, so it's just not, wasn't not the, best, the way you want to do it. No, not the most touristy kind of way of saying it. <laughs> no, and I was going to a lot of the places that a uh, regular like uh, international tourists don't get to see. That it, you know, a lot of the summer places, Batemans Bay, and um, I can't think of some of the other towns, but all the way down the coast, it was very. It, it is so gorgeous. It's the part beautiful. That wasn't, yeah. yeah, it's it's. We'll, we'll get you back there. Don't worry. It's like I guess Australia is definitely um, such a beautiful land, and there's so much. Like right now, everyone's still struggling. They're not allowed to go to the beach, right? They've got that all quarantined off. Uh, right. But it's you know coming from that and living in the city where I've had so much. Like I used to get up, walk in board shorts down to the beach, get my coffee, and start working. Now I'm like, I'm not wearing a suit, but I'm in the city, so it's a lot different environment, which I love. Like I have you can go to the Hudson that. River, walk yeah. over the Hudson River in your board shorts. It's fun. <laughs> I can do that. I actually went stand up paddle boarding in the Hudson. That was pretty fun, actually. It was good to get back out there. Yeah? Yeah, it's Just, fun. You got to really have a good core so you don't fall in the water. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, actually. It's like actually really motivating not to fall off in the Hudson River. <laughs> yeah. All right. So how's your chicken looking? It? How's your chicken looking? It looks good, I think. Oh, no. It's not, it's not brown yet. Cool. So... What I want you to do is have you marinate right next to it because as soon as we turn it over, you're going to pour your marinade over the top and that'll take about 30 seconds and you're just going to put it into the oven and then you're pretty much just waiting for your chicken to cook. So just to recap that for those who are watching, so vegetables in the oven, got her marinade, look at that, that looks delicious. And so she's cooking a chicken, she's going to turn it over and then put it in the oven and, it's really, and then she's pretty much ready to serve after that. She can start cleaning up. Uh, you know, pretty happy days with my pollock. So here it is right here. Nice, beautiful, thin fish, just like that. Or you can pick it up in the other side of the fillet like this. And because of the size of this, it's going to cook very quickly. So I'm actually going to pour the marinade over the top of that right now. Really simple marinade. And this one's skin off, uh, which means roasting it actually is much easier. All right. Get some olive oil into that. I'm going to season that as well with salt and pepper. Get them amongst it. Talk to me, Chef. How's it looking? Ooh, yes. You know it? In the oven? Yeah, everything's in there that's going. 
Perfect. All right, well, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to chuck mine straight into the oven as is. So marinate on top. And you can do the same thing for you know, any other piece as well. All right. All right, so now you can, this is the best thing. So you've got everything in the oven. I call time on the tools is the actual time it takes you as an individual to cook. So you've done everything now. So all you have to do is you can clean up, you can do whatever you need to do, and check on your, how's your grain doing? How's your colorful grains? The grain, my grain was already pretty much done, so it's pretty through. <laughs> and your veggies looking fine, fantastic. Yeah. So and that's I, will, actually, I will say that the dish thing, because especially I've been doing a lot of these, my husband cannot handle how many dishes I make. So a di a, something like this where it gives me time to wash, huge. Because then you won't feel overwhelmed. Which is that the relationship him. you guys have now? Is he, is he the cleaner? You're like, That's how it works. And I he's mean, like, why did you use 60 of these? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I was lying. You know what I'm going to do, though? Dan, can I throw in the mushrooms now? Absolutely. What have you got? What kind of mushrooms have you got? I've got, like, the, you know, the, the mix, the oyster and the shiitake and the, I don't know what these are. They look like shimeji. Yeah, yum. That, that yeah, crazy. shimeji. I totally yeah. knew that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, chuck them in for sure. Great. Where's my thing? Oh, yeah. And tell me, this how is, are your veggies doing? I'm going to show that you. Look, that look that I just gave everybody is me in the kitchen often. It's like this. I'm like, what was I doing? Where am I next? <laughs> Anybody else feel like that? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so here's a little sneak peek, everyone. So this is about, ooh, I'd say about 10, 10 minutes in, and you get these, like, really nice marinade kind of looking numbers. And this is why I love this kind of cooking because it's like, it's almost like a sheet pan dinner, if you know what I mean, ginger. Yeah. Like you just chuck everything on a sheet tray and cook it. I live for these because it really, the two-year-old, is he's on a schedule. And if he doesn't eat at five o'clock, it's over. Does, like, he sit there? Like, Does he sit there with his knife and fork at the end of the table and be like this? He is. Yeah, he's, he is so <laughs> scheduled. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, when he gets to my age, you'll be in a super routine state. You'll be happy about it, right? Yeah, true. And it does work for us for the most part. Like, for sleep, it's great. Just when you're like, <laughs> gosh, could I, could I have another 20 minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, kids. I'm glad I am still one. <laughs> That's a, it's a big reason why I ended up doing this cook club because every day it would be about two o'clock and if I did have to go to work again in the afternoon or if I didn't either way I'd have this freak out moment like oh my gosh what are we gonna make for dinner and I had made everything on my two favorite websites that was available and I was like I need more ideas so this type of thing where we're sharing conversation and I'm learning the whole way has been so you know selfishly very beneficial but it's been yeah, really sure. fun to do with all of our viewers and everybody too. So yeah, of course. I think I, I think the biggest misconception people feel is, and this is why I, I didn't want this to happen. But the fact that one thing to come out of it is people have actually truly understood how easy cooking is. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it's actually like a, obviously you learn the, the better you get at it, the fewer dishes you use, the quicker it becomes, uh, and it makes me more excited. Obviously, click throughs of recipes on blogs and everything are going through the roof. Um, which is really exciting, but it's just that making food and cooking is more attainable, which means people are now going to know where their food comes from because they're understanding like, oh, mum bought me that pepper, pepper to cook with. Now, where does that come from? And you're interested to know where it, it's really exciting in that regard. You know, and um, if everybody, some people just hop in here. So this is Dan Churchill and you can find, you're at Dan underscore Churchill, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Handle. And if you want the recipe for what we're making, I know GMA will likely put it up when I post this. And then I'm sure if they go to your page, you'll have a lot of great things. Included. Yeah, so be on my website. I've actually posted this recipe on my Instagram as well. So it's, yeah, it's on Instagram, on my website, danchurchill.com. And then, yeah, it'll be in the search bar. Just write Wild Alaska Pod Game on. So happy days. And Dan, I love that you've been talking about sustainability and the environment when it's attached to food, because that's something that I'm really passionate about. I'm, awesome. I'm awful to go to the grocery store with because I have to know where everything came from. Everything, like, how was the farmer feeling when he made that? <laughs> actually, actually, it's but a big deal. It is, and I, I was fortunate enough to grow up where we had a lot of our own produce on a small farm in Michigan. And so when I started going into the world and realizing that's not how food was made or, or consumed it was really jarring for me so it's always been a big push and because i'm a scientist and a meteorologist that is a huge part of what i do and so when you start mentioning the most sustainable fish you know very easy to get doesn't 
you know, when it can be frozen or doesn't come from far, all of those things matter so much. So I appreciate that stance on food. Somebody was saying that and I agree. Uh, yeah, it's, it's epic. I feel like, you know, we obviously have a responsibility in the positions we're in and particularly with your job as, you know, what your role is with GMA. It's like people look out for thought leaders like yourself to give them the right understanding. And I feel they're actually interested in knowing more. It's just conveying the message in the right way. Like if you can buy fresh frozen, that's wild caught, super nutrient dense, that's abundant nature, most abundant species, fantastic. And especially when it's really affordable. If you understand that soil is the most, you know, I guess at the original site, soil is the biggest issue we have because that's where the origin of all food comes from. And if we understand where, or more about soil, then, you know, it can help understand why we buy from certain farmers markets, why we avoid and certain things. Knowing soil and what we've done in a lot of ways is kind of bastardize soil and, and what it is. And I learned so much. I, I did a show called Food Forecast, and people can still watch it on ABC News Live. But I went, one of my favorite episodes was the grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And I went with these, like, really amazing, they were real cowboys. And they, I yeah. got there, they, were, they had the, the guns in their pockets, and they were on their, you know, they were on their horses rounding up the cattle. I got on them with, and they said, listen, they gave me a soil sermon about what we need to do to take care of this planet and take care of our soil. And they talked about how they made it through the Texas drought. And they were one of the only ranches in the whole region to make it through. So economically, it made sense. But then their product at the end was, you know, benefiting too. Absolutely. What was that? Uh, what, what's some of the other stories you found in the world of sustainability and what you do that really have changed? Like, I wouldn't say change, I'm sure you've always been on that path, but really opened your eyes. Like, wow, can't believe that was so, you know, impacting. The, so I didn't grow up on the East Coast. My mom grew up on Long Island, uh, but I did a story on the lobster in the Long Island Sound and how as, as you know, few as 30, 40 years ago, they were prolific. I mean, they were everywhere. And then overfishing, um, toxins being dumped in the Long Island Sound and warming water, the combination has really taken them away. I mean, there are very few, if any, um, on a given year. So you had this whole row of lobstermen from Long Island all the way up to Rhode Island that grew up, they were maybe third, fourth generation lobstermen, and they had to change the way that they fished. So they became scallop fishermen, or they, you know, um, they had to change what they looked for, and they had to go deeper in the sea and they had to move. So, and then we went to Maine and saw how some of that has been protected and done right. And so that was one of those places where I hadn't really thought a lot about lobster. I don't eat it that often. Um, I like it, you know, I think it's a very special, but the way that it's done and the, the you know, just the, the practice of fishing, I hadn't spent a lot of time with, even though I grew up on the Great Lakes and we fish plenty, um, that was amazing to me. And how much we can change or hopefully ask to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I read a book and it was it's similar to soil, phytoplankton. And I'm sure you know so much about yeah. phytoplankton. Like, yeah. that's the origin of everything in the sea. And I didn't realize that we, we require for storing emissions in a way. And when that goes away through the temperature change and whatnot, anyway, it's just amazing once you read things, particularly now, we're all reading now, right? Which is really exciting. Yes. We're learning so much. <laughs> Speaking That's what time does for you. See, exactly. I'm going to check on my fish. So okay. My chicken's definitely not done yet, right? I'm no, I wouldn't think so. But I will teach you the way to determine how to see when your chicken is finished. Now, my fish is done. So this is how thin. I'm going to pick it up and you see how thin it is. So it's going to flake apart. So it's starting to flake. It may even fall off. That's really simple how wild lasso product cooks. And that's all that is in the marinade. So I'm just going to set it aside. And you actually, technically, if you, if you work in a kitchen, like a restaurant, we actually undercook our fish slightly. Because by the time it goes from the, I guess, the oven to the past to being plated to then to serves, then the waiter taking it to the table is about... It's still cooking. Of, exactly. So we allow residual heat to cook it through. So with that being said, I'm also going to check it on my veggies. Yeah, veggies are done. Now, in a, in a real world, when I wasn't uh, hanging out chatting to the ginger and putting everything down, so all I have to do is serve my dishes. How you, how your red veggies looking? I'm just going to add a little salt to my veggies and crisp them for a couple more minutes. But there you go. Yes, chef. <laughs> yeah, chef. No, um, absolutely no. So, 
Have you, now, I know nobody knows what's next. I know nobody, but what are you working on? Like, what do you want people to know about what's going on in your life right now? Uh, you know, not necessarily me specifically. Like, my, my restaurant's doing some pretty cool things in making sure that, you know, well, so service in the community through things like our meal plans uh, and whatnot. So, you know, there's a lot to learn from just going to charliestreet.com for that. Um, my podcast has been going really well, actually, as a result of diving more into human performance and learning more about ourselves in this time. So we're driving that. And then... What's I'm that working, called? What's the podcast called? Uh, the Epic Table. So just go to wherever you listen to podcasts and go to The Epic Table. Um, and then I'm doing a lot of content out of my studio kitchen. So like a lot of partners have asked me to, you know, right now, like when I can't travel to be a spokesperson at their events, um, I'm able to, you know, do digital content here, recipe videos, just much like yeah. we're doing here. So you'll see a lot of that. Just go to my Instagram and you'll see what's going on with all that. So, and then hopefully you'll see me traveling again, doing exactly what Ginger was talking about with, uh, you know, people understanding where their food comes from and a bit more on sustainability mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, it's so important. So I, I want to, too, somebody said, Ginger, you should go to Alaska and do a story on the fishing. I did do an Alaskan story. I went to cover the deadliest catch and oh, yeah? the crabbing that they do. How was that it? Was, it was after a giant storm had just passed through. Um, <laughs> I, I was not the only one that was sick for three days. The captains, <laughs> the captains of the fit, it was their first week out. Everybody... <laughs> was done for. Like we had to turn around. We couldn't stay out because people were gonna have to be airlifted because everyone was so dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to do uh, a more serene Alaskan fishing story. All right. If I can organize that, would you go? Yes. All right, sweet. Uh, leave that. And leave I that think that's you. a great place. <laughs> talk about talk about untouched. I didn't get to do a lot of that part. Like we had to include it in our story because there were twenty five foot swells. The the wall of water that you saw on that boat. And like, I made it about 40 minutes before I just was, oh, it was done. That's and everybody impressive. was, it's dinner time, so I won't go into detail. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> but I, it was a great adventure. And either way, I learned a lot from those guys. They've been doing it, you know, for generations. And you talk about pristine waters in a lot of those places and things that haven't been touched. I was also able to go up um, to cover Gold Rush, oh. so way up in the Yukon. And that is some area where their game and their, their food is truly the most local and sustainable because it's right in front of them. So it's very cool to learn well. from them. Yeah. yeah, it's, I think um, I'm, in those parts of the world, I'm so interested in that alone when you're talking about, like we, we are in right now in New York and are you New Jersey or New York City? New York, uh, just yeah. north of New York. We moved out of the city because the second baby, there was no room. Okay. So like, I find it so interesting. We're obviously here and we have an abundance of, you know, resources available. But when you go to those areas, they only have what's available to them and you learn so much about a culture through their food and what's available. So, yeah, I love traveling to those kind of places. I, I, I would definitely picture this massive rock in the boat and these gentlemen are, like, probably chilling, going to throw up at some point, and you're like, okay, should I be scared? Is this like... <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. That is so wait, so I'm gonna take the chicken out. I have a question. Um, we use a meat thermometer a lot because my husband's always very worried. Is that cheesy to use a meat thermometer? Is that Absolutely cool? Absolutely not, but I'm gonna teach you a way that you don't have to. Okay. Okay, so what I need you to get, get yourself a fork and what you're gonna do. So, oh, I'm gonna do this, oh, I've got an idea. So, this is for everyone who's always wanted to know, how do I know when my chicken breast is done? All right. So you're going to get your fork. You're going to find the thickest part of your chicken breast. Yeah. And you're going to put it in. Mm -hmm. You're going to put it in for about three seconds and pull it out. Now, the <laughs> now put it to your bottom lip. It's not done. Perfect. Put it in. Now, how did you know it wasn't done? Because it didn't feel warm yeah exactly so that's yeah. how you know so if it's piercing hot you've overcooked it if it's nice and warm it's perfect and if it's what ginger just exposed yeah. it's i want to check it just to make sure that i'm right but go for it i'm interested because you know maybe it's well this is, yeah, this, is, this is this is a true french technique of cooking but like it's also removes like at the other day people like how do i don't know if my chicken's cooked cut into it <laughs> but if 130 
Yep. Hey, Ginger's a chef. She knew straight away. She's got the senses. And what? And for those playing at home, what what temperature were you looking for, Ginger? What's that? For those who actually do have a thermometer as well, what temperature were you looking for chicken to be? 165. Yeah, nailed it. So that's the, the temperature. If you're using a thermometer, guys, you insert that in, you're looking to be 165. Great. How's that looking? Okay. I think though, I think yours is through and you've got it all together, right? Yeah, I might as well just plate mine up quickly. Hang on. Yeah, plate yours and, and we'll get yours going so we can... Well, you know what I'm mostly worried about? I'm worse, my two-year-old's got 20 minutes and, t you know, he's going to be in is demand. It, is it? <laughs> the last, I did one on my page and he's, he likes to sit here sometimes, but he gave me a nice smack on my bottom right when we started and I was like, oh, this is going to go well. Great. Wow. Okay. Look. He's a fresh one. <laughs> sure. We need to teach him about equality as well. He can't be doing that. <laughs> no. No. He's, he's not got a good start. He thinks he's got me. <laughs> All right. So, I'm just up. so if you, if you, as I said, guys, if you're looking for a nice, super healthy, easy way to cook a dinner, you've got your grain, you've got your veggies. We've just got a nice mm -hmm. marinade roast in the oven, and then all I did was put that same marinade on a wild Alaska pollock, and then sort of drizzle with olive oil and then squeeze over some lemon juice. And you know what? It's my dinner time now as well, because if it's your son, so is mine. That's how simple it is, guys. Why does Dan look like Shark Boy? Who's Shark Boy? Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, so Shark Boy, it's a movie. My, my four-year-old likes it a lot. Sweet. I, don't know. I think I got Shark Boy's very cool. Listen, Actually, if you look like Shark Boy, I'm going to get Adrian up here and he's going to be so excited. <laughs> I got, so I made a sourdough and someone, I've been asking people, what should I call my sourdough? And they said, you should call it John Doe instead of John Snow because you look like John Snow. And I was like, <laughs> very complimented by it. It's, it's the man yeah. bun. This is what quarantine does. My hairdresser no longer is around, so I have to start wearing my hair like ginger. <laughs> and so you you haven't um, tried to cut it yourself? Like Absolutely that. not. I when I come and see you guys, I get my hair cut. Like honestly, in the mornings at the studio, they cut my hair. Then and there's <laughs> awesome guys down here in Mott, New York City who do my hair. Other than that, yeah, like I just don't touch it myself. I've had a lot of mates recommend yeah. that they'll do it for me, but I'll I'll probably miles will shave it all off. If that was going to be the case. A couple of questions to see your fish close up. They want to see the uh, polyp. Yeah, perfect. No dramas. So you get a nice, super flaky. Wow. Uh, and all that was, as I said, like you just put it straight in the oven. Uh, you can also sear it first, get a nice golden brown on the base, similar to what Ginger's doing. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to cook in the oven for as long if that's the case. But that's how simple it is. Like frozen, that was frozen fish. Obviously caught, frozen immediately, straight into a, a pan. So it's pretty simple cooking. I like to know that Frozen's okay, too. Yeah, um, it is. Fantastic I'm, for you. I'm going to let that go so that we can let everybody go. But again, if you were following us the whole time, Dan is going to post this. He already did it on his Instagram, I think. We're going to post it here, the recipe. It's easy. It's healthy. I'm telling you, it's the fastest and the least dishes I've used all week. So I'm feeling very <laughs> proud. Um, but you right can really do a lot with it. So I appreciate this because I'm going to take this one with me and maybe even make some little changes. In my spice drawer. <laughs> there you go. That is fantastic, brother. Can you take a photo of that and send it to me? That is definitely yeah, well, amazing. Well, That's amazing. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan, so much. You guys, go follow him. You were so fun. It was so nice to catch up with you, and I you hope we can do it job. again soon. Absolutely. Stay well, and big love to the family. Thank you, and I will just, um, just in case anybody was wondering, that was Brando making all that squeaking noise. He's done now. <laughs> hey, Brando. He's, he's ready for dinner. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Bye.